Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hello, my name is Paul Johnson. I'm an associate professor at Upstate Medical University in Syracuse, New York. Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine on setting analytical quality goals with biological variation data. Clinical chemists are familiar with the need to establish or verify analytical performance prior to implementing a test for patient care use. These components include precision, bias, and total method error, abbreviated TME. TME is then compared with total allowable error, abbreviated TE sub A or TAE in this presentation. When total method error is less than total allowable error, the new test method is usually considered to have met the necessary requirements for patient care use. TME is calculated from bias and standard deviation values obtained from method comparison experiments. The figure shown illustrates a positive bias with the new test method as compared to the true value established by a reference standard or other comparative method. Imprecision follows a Gaussian distribution, which is calculated using z-value at desired probability level. The traditional calculation is shown for TME equals bias plus 1.65 times standard deviation, where 1.65 is the one-sided z-value for 5% probability of a normal distribution curve. Published biological variation estimates for a test analyte will allow us to apply specific cutoff values to evaluate these components of method error as illustrated in the figure. Establishing analytical quality goals for TAE has a rich history. Briefly, these may be based on legal requirements, as for example, CLIA laws in the United States, or it may be set by providers of proficiency testing, external quality assessment scheme programs, which is the case in many regions of the world. As it has become evident that biological variation ranges differ across test analytes, and that improved estimates of biological variation are readily accessible, there is renewed attention on establishing TAE goals using biological variation data. Addressing this topic of how clinical laboratorians can use published biological variation data for setting analytical quality goals is the focus of this pearl. For additional background on biological variation, as well as the use of calculations like the reference change value RCV and index of individuality, listeners are referred to a September 2012 pearl on this topic by Danny Lee. As the name suggests, biological variation is a source of variance in laboratory test results. These data are commonly expressed as percent coefficient of variation, CV, or relative standard deviation, abbreviated RSD. Both terms are equivalent and are calculated by first converting variance to standard deviation, dividing SD by the mean value of the data set, and then multiplying by 100% to express as a percentage value. Biological variation data presented in this pearl are expressed in percent CV terms. There are two components of importance. First, the between subject component, CVG, which can be viewed as group variation. Second, the within subject component, CVI, which can be viewed as individual variation. These terms and subscripts can vary across publications, although today the generally agreed upon nomenclature is CVG and CVI. The two components of biological variation, abbreviated BV throughout this presentation, include CVG and CVI, which can be visualized in this figure. Shown in this example are eight unique samples collected at different time points on 12 different subjects labeled A through L. Data is shown with individual values, the open red colored circles, subject mean value, the blue square, and range box to show the minimum and maximum test values for each subject. Of note, all test samples were obtained from a healthy or disease-free cohort of subjects. Between subject variability, CVG, is visualized in the horizontal direction based on variation across subject mean values. Vertical boxes help illustrate the within-subject variation, CVI. 
The most recent biological variation estimates and database are provided online by the European Federation of Clinical Chemistry and Laboratory Medicine, or EFLM. On its website, the EFLM provide a meta-analysis of published papers on biological variation to obtain CVI and CVG estimates. The table in this slide was created for selected chemistry analytes by using the median values for CVI and CVG provided on the EFLM website, along with the number of publications, N, used to generate the final estimates. It is these numbers that we will be using to set analytical quality goals. I've expanded the previous biological variation data table to now include desirable limits for imprecision, I, bias, B, and total error, TE, all expressed as percentage values. In the next few slides, I will go through each of the calculations used to obtain these numbers. The first of our calculations is setting the desirable imprecision goal, which will be based on CVI estimate for the test biomarker. The listener will recall that CVI represents a distribution of repeated test values taken from the same subject. Ideally, CVI is a pure estimate of normal human biology only. In practice, Analytical variation, CVA, of the test method used to generate the result contributes variation to the CVI estimate. Because of this relationship, it has been recommended that the desirable analytical imprecision goal should be less than one half of within subject biological variation. The justification for the previous desirable goal for imprecision is based on the direct contribution of analytical imprecision to within subject biological variation. This can be calculated using the sum of variances rule. The left side panel shows the combined CVA and CVI values summed as variance terms and denoted CVI sub t. The formula is square root CVI squared plus CVA squared. From this formula, it is clear that the percentage variability added to the true test result increases as random analytical variation CVA increases and vice versa. It will be useful to imagine a fixed average test value based on biological variation for a person when thinking about the impact of analytical imprecision on the test result. For example, when CVA approaches 0%, the ideal, the person's true test result from a single measurement has uncertainty due only to within subject biological variation. By contrast, what happens when CVA is exactly equal to one half of CVI at the desirable goal? Substituting 50% CVI or 0.5 CVI for CVA into the equation shown on the right now gives a total CVI value equal to the square root of 1.25 times CVI, which is equal to 1.12 or 12% additional variation added to the true test result because of analytical imprecision. The same equation can be applied to any ratio value of CVA to CVI. Shown in this figure is the sum of variances rule for total biological variation, which is the combination of both within subject BV and between subject BV. This equation will be useful in setting the desirable bias goal. In order to set desirable method bias goal, we will use the equation that sums both components of biological variation as just described. It has been recommended that any method bias should be less than one fourth or 0.25 of total biological variation. We can think of bias as a difference between people, which is why both CVI and CVG values are included in this calculation. Since reference intervals for a clinical test are determined based on biological groupings of individuals, it is reasonable to expect that any method bias could shift the proportion of individuals correctly classified as true positives and true negatives. The factor 0.25, used to set the maximum desirable ratio of method bias to total biological variation, is a practical effort to minimize false positives and negatives that may occur when method bias is present. Callum Frazier and colleagues have summarized that a positive bias ratio of 0.25 at the desirable goal would cause 4.4% of healthy individuals to be classified as having an abnormal value outside of the reference limit versus the expected 2.5%.
Lastly, we can derive total allowable error, TAE, by combining the two previous equations. A standard calculation for TAE is sum of 1.65 times imprecision plus bias. The 1.65 multiplier is the one-sided 95% significance level based on a z-distribution. If setting TAE limits to 99% probability, 2.33 will be used as the multiplying factor instead of 1.65. To our original table, let's look at alanine aminotransferase, ALT test, as an example. The CVI and CVG estimates for ALT are based on 14 total publications. To get desirable limits for imprecision, we'll take 50% of CVI, or 9.6, which will give us 4.8% for desirable imprecision. For bias, we will use the 0.25 factor times the sum of variances of CVI and CVG, which is 9.6 squared plus 28 squared, giving as a final result a 7.4%. Lastly, total method error equals 1.65 times the imprecision limit of 4.8% plus 7.4%, the bias limit, and this gives us a final value of 15.3%. Expressing these limits and biological variation data in present CV terms is helpful because they apply equally to any unit of measure, whether conventional US units or international units. When needed, these percentage values can be back converted to a specific unit of measure for the test analyte through simple mathematical calculations. So far, we have looked at establishing the, quote, desirable cutoffs, which really represents a balance between the optimal cutoff and minimum acceptable cutoff. Illustrated in this figure is a relative comparison of three levels of performance criteria, which differ only in the multiplier factor used. The rest of the calculations are the same. For some test analytes, achieving optimal level cutoff may be extremely difficult because of its biological variation. Nonetheless, it is expected that acceptable test methods will perform at least as well as the minimum cutoff values for it to be put into clinical use for patient care. Returning back to our ALT example, now included are the multiplier factors for all three performance levels. The desirable cutoffs for imprecision and bias are same as previously shown. Notice for the ALT tests that the 4.8% desirable analytical imprecision goal is reduced to 2.4% to meet the optimal goal, but increases up to 7.2% to achieve minimal or minimum acceptable performance. Similar calculations apply for bias goals, and these can be extended to show total error as discussed earlier. Let's assume we are interested in establishing a new instrument method for ALT enzyme designated instrument B. Method comparison experiments are performed in the laboratory. The mean bias of instrument B is determined by comparing it to an established ALT method noted as instrument A. In this example, bias equals 2.3 units per liter, or 8% relative to the mean value of the two instruments of 29 units per liter. Total imprecision determined from separate precision experiments equals a CV of 6.5%. Using the standard calculation for total method error, instrument B has a total method error of 18.8%. Lastly, let's take the test methods in precision, bias, and TME data to compare with calculated limits based on biological variation. Shown in the table are comparison of total allowable error based on biological variation desirable and minimum limits. Optimal criteria are not shown. The method has not met desirable goals because all three values are greater than the desirable cutoff limits. However, all three calculated values for this ALT test method are less than the minimum cutoff goals, so we can state that it has passed these standards. By way of comparison, the error limit for ALT enzyme is plus or minus 20% based on CLIA proficiency testing in the United States. Whether such limits are greater than, less than, or equal to biological variation goals 
depends on the specific test analyte. Improved alignment of performance limits across clinical tests may occur if the biological variation approach is adopted by external quality assessment providers or used within the legal regulatory environment. Thank you for joining me on this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine, Setting Analytical Quality Goals with Biological Variation Data. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.